not be more excited to see more of this take on the character. Let's talk about Batman. It is crazy that Ben Affleck's Batman shows up in this movie. No, it's not really because it's a superhero movie and you argue that it's just like the Flash coming in and that's cool because it's a superhero movie and this is what superheroes do. And it's, it's all connected comics, and blah, blah, blah. Comics do this all the time, so it's very much like a comic. You just argued this. It's whatever up in this movie and weirdly this is one of the most accurate depictions of batman we've ever seen in a movie he's like a predator appearing from the shadows in these short scenes taking out bad guys and going out of his way not to kill anyone Keep yeah we've seen that in other movies many other movies are we forgetting again the interrogation scene where he closes the door and turns on the light and then batman's there just no there, there, he uh, do we have to demonstrate other times where he sneaks into people, sneaks into the shadows and not kills people? What about when um the, the famous I am Batman where he drops someone off the thing? And go, it, it, it's, it's all there. Flashbacks from before Batman v Superman. So it is really awesome. We get Do you know that? Why wouldn't he kill Harley Quinn there? Because he stopped killing after Bats v Supes. That was my whole thing. Why is Joker alive? Mm -hmm. There's literally no reason why he should be alive. If the time frame is as you yeah. say. He's willing to kill. We've seen that in the movie. He's flipping about it. He doesn't care. Why is Joker alive? And especially Harley Quinn, who he actively saves. To see him before he went over the edge. Okay. How do you know this? Next, Amanda Waller is a ruthless manipulator in the comics, and the movie doesn't shy away from that. She actually ah, uses the head. The same. Mm, 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 as opposed mm. to different. Mm, you see, mm. the same and different are both good. Mm -hmm. There can be no bad. There can be no wrong. She's just like the comics, which is good. But he's different from the comics, which is good. No, he said it was comic accurate. Which is good. Based on... Three comics? <laughs> All-Star Batman and Robin being one of them. Which is freaking intense. Yes, we could have seen more of them and not just for a character that was just like a red shirt that we knew was gonna die. The thing is, superhero movies, especially on the MCU side, struggle with villains. They're pretty one note, but Amanda Waller is pretty complex as a character and you her show, rationale- You show the bad ones and not the good ones. Um, first off, Whiplash was not terrible. Yeah, no. So, what, what about Red Skull? Red Skull was amazing. Um, Loki, Loki's great. Great. Um, Red Hulk was fine. Yeah, Abomination. I, I'm not. Yeah. It's whatever. Um, Winter Soldier. Yeah. I like how you just go no. Side struggle with villains. They're pretty one note, but Rolling Amanda Waller is trash. pretty complex as a character, and her rationale makes sense. She thinks she's the good guy, saving the U.S. and all, and technically she is. Isn't that a couple of Iron Man people? Yeah. And outside of that, what's her motivation? Uh, to do good for the government and America. Why? Oh, just because that's her job. You, you're you're not. You're not a. You're not at liberty to say anything about that. Why, how Doing not? good for America. Part seven. Are you? He, he, his whole, his, that's his life. Yeah. He goes. Oh, no, he goes. Like, yeah. Okay. It doesn't even matter. He goes. I don't want I'm the playing. power myself. I'm playing. I just know that if other yeah. people have it, they'll abuse it. So I will take this all in for America, for my country. Everything that I've done in my heart, is, I know is pure for the right reasons. I don't tell lies and I don't break my promises. In funny Valentine. No, but Diavolo. Get that. Oh my goodness. Ain't nobody talking about funny Valentine. They all over the nuts of Gyro though. Gyro's fine. Funny is amazing. <laughs> Apparently not, because Dia, top of the top. Man! Even if you don't go funny, how do you go Dia over Kira? Uh, over anything! Man! Get, get me ultimate cars over that mug! <laughs> 
And quickly, let's talk about the squad itself. Harley Quinn. I think the one thing we can all agree on is that Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn is like the animated series character just came to life. No. But she's really good, though. She's a really good Harley Quinn in this whole universe. Yeah, though. she's our own Harley Quinn, which yeah. is good. Yep. But straight from the... No. No, I wouldn't say that. But has, but same is good now. Okay, yep. This character just came to life. She has the obsession. She has the weird sexual relationship with the Joker. She's also kind of terrifying. She Harley Quinn? So she's Harley Quinn. Yeah. So she is the character so Harley, Harley Quinn, Quinn. is Harley Quinn. We have the shot of her in the Harley Look, she has a hammer. And that's good. Esther costume, like the Alex Ross cover. Like the fact that they had her on screen saying pen and it wasn't super weird, that's an achievement in and of itself. No, El it's not. Had an interesting twist in this Pause. movie. How? We expect the Harley Quinn to say that. What do you mean it's going to be super weird? Harley Quinn says that. She says the thing. So how would it not be weird? You know what's weird? Having a necklace that says Putin. That's weird. But we're not talking about that, I guess. You would think Avengers Assemble would be super awkward. It was the, the hype, hype is. Is, yo. There's a uh, there's a real discussion going on right now. What was hyper? Thor coming in, in Wakanda or the last scene of Infinity where they all come together? How was that an argument? Thor was hype -ish, yo. It was hype -ish, but... I, it, it, and that music I, is right when he catches his axe. It's so high, we're not, yo. I'm not even thinking about the whole is it. Just give me Finn Cap taking off his shield. No, and no. Just they're not coming towards that army. They're not. No, that's it. That's it. I don't care. That's better than all this. They're only counting. There's all no your argument on. Because <laughs> there's nothing beating that. <laughs> Looking at all these moths and Thanos who just took out everybody next to him. And he's going, let's, let's go. go. The hype is, yo. Comics, he turned himself in after he burned down a gang's housing compound and discovered he accidentally torched their families too. Here, he also torched a family, but it was his own family. So the whole movie, he does 1408 <laughs> um that's very much the story of invincible there's a story in invincible where um one of the characters one of the villains starts um stealing weaponry and stuff and he wants to hurt invincible for some reason i can't remember at this particular moment so he traps his family uh but the family's in on it they want to hurt invincible too so he traps the family, and it's like, okay, Invincible, we're going to fight. And it, he keeps hitting them with all this electricity and juice, and it, uh, the currents hit his family and dust them. And then in his mind, it's just like, Invincible, you did this. So he becomes a, vis uh, a villain and just mm -hmm. keeps fighting them. Is that not the same story I'm seeing here? But yeah, yeah, that was a nice story. I, I appreciated the characterization of Absolutely. Of that's one of the good ones. Um, yeah, as opposed to something like Killer Croc or Captain Boomerang, I would say the people that get the best stories are El Diablo, Enchantress, Harley Quinn, and Deadshot. Everybody else can go sit and spin. But there was also a bit of yada yada in that because he was telling a story and, and the wife was just like, you don't bring this in my house. I'm taking the kids. He's like, you don't take my kids. And then it cuts back to him and like, and then they were dead. And then it just cuts back to this. I'm like, well, there's a middle part there that's kind of important movie he doesn't want to use his powers you want to see something Yo, yeah i want to see, see something yes i want to see something despite them being the most powerful out of the groups because of what he had enchantress i guess the immediate group without her ah uh, okay I, i'd still argue katana yeah she's some she got some strongness one cut and your soul is in the in the sword that's pretty good previously used those powers for. That could be an entire movie unto itself. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about good. Rick Flagg. Making Rick Flagg and June Moon a couple, then having June Moon essentially held Boy, captive. You made them a couple in 30 seconds. She went, uh, I, I assigned him to her, and then they fell in love. Aren't you gonna kiss me? And then that was it. D there's nothing here. You might as well have just started with them being a couple, not even showing this. 
Because if you're just gonna freaking do half of it, don't even do any of it. Mm-hmm. I can accept something just like, yeah, we're a couple. I can't accept, yeah, here's the beginning of our relationship. I got, I feel and it nothing. Was just like, whoa, 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 whoa. I feel Nathan for these people. Having June Moon essentially held captive when she becomes the Enchantress, and then tasking Rick Flag with taking out the Enchantress, that's just, that's just awesome. And the same- It's a story. Yeah. There's nothing fantastic about it. That's, something like that, it's just like, it's, just, it's the avatar of a, of a story. It's like, okay, and it's now- you, outline. Now you add stuff onto it. Oh, you're not? That's just, that's just all of it? Okay. Okay, and it, even if it's an awesome plot point, was it executed well? Yeah. Because I can, I can present you a thousand awesome ideas. Doesn't mean they're going to necessarily come to fruition in a, in a coherent and good way. Same way Amanda Waller is a complex villain, so is Enchantress. You both want Task Force X to stop her, but you're also worried that they might kill June Moon. Tying oh, one. Mm-mm. Didn't care for her. Yeah. Didn't she was care about her. Die. She. She, she's willing to die several times in the movie. I don't care. Um, yeah, no. It's her own fault. She got that freaking thing and she just went, oh, what's this? Instead of being an archaeologist and handling it with kids gloves, she goes, what's this? And start beating it on the ground like, oh, no, I'm possessed now. She's stupid. I want no part of it. What? I feel nothing for this character. I haven't had enough time to attach yeah. myself to her, so why should I give a sh- No, homeboy likes her and she likes homeboy. And and so we must like them too, and must feel for their plight. No. no. To the antagonist in this way is really awesome and different than the typical boss battles you find at the end of these movies. Like at the end of. Daredevil Electra. Hmm, that's that's a good one. Oh boy, but that that's uh, all the Civil War. That was that was a really good one. They're all friends. There's a couple times you're just like, wow, Black Widow does not want to hurt people that much. X Men Three. Oh, it was a bad movie, but it was a good ending. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess it just kind of happens sometimes, yep. huh? Yep. Whoops. Whoops a day is cool. I love Man of Steel, but the end of Man of Steel was just a- You love Man of Steel? That's all we need to say. That's, <laughs> that, that. What else do we need here? Homeboy likes Man of Steel. That's one of those loves. things where- That's one of those things where I just go- where people would go, I love this thing. And I always go, what else do you like? People, <laughs> you know, oh, man, I love DBZ. Now, I'll do a little bit of a creepy, hey, let me check out their Twitter. And it's all just DBZ stuff. I'm like, okay, what else do you like? What a, Oh, Bleach? Okay, great, fantastic. You're really breaking bars here. Oh, Death Note fan. It's, it's just like, um, um, part five. The brilliance of, not the, everything great about part five. Mm-hmm. We just had a bunch of base level stuff in the background. You're like, well, just just tells me what your tastes are. And I, I don't, I don't listen to people who's who like something like this as much as other people. Mm-hmm. Like when when um, Mike or Pro try to recommend me something, I'm like, I don't trust you guys as much as I trust somebody like BG. Filter it through him, and he say it's good. Then I watch it. That yeah, was, absolutely. Back when they were trying to like, yo, Ruby's really good, really good, really good. I was like, well, BG said it wasn't really good, and I trust him a lot more. And was the stuff I said not really good? Not oh, really good? Boy. They like volume one, and volume <laughs> one is poop. And that's the only one I watched, and I went, oh, no, yep. this and ain't like, good. Well, I trust BG more. Sorry. <laughs> and if you go, man, I love Madison, I'm like, okay. Well, <laughs> I got, I we the common ground is very, very shaky. Man of Steel, I love Man of Steel, but the end of Man of Steel was just a freaking fight scene, like Dragon Ball Z for 30 minutes, and nothing was really happening. It was awesome looking, but it was just like, okay, Superman, just, you know? What's- No! What? That's what you want from this Superman? That's what I said. Just, just do it. Just kill him like we know when you bought to. Here just- it comes. Just, just, yeah, 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 just get it over with. Out of Superman. All right, Zod. It's time to fight. Yeah, we knew this was going to happen. So let's just get to the end of it. Good thing they don't want to sell out their characters, huh? (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Homeboy could play a really good (laughs) Two-Face. Really impressive, and I just want to put this out there, that unlike a lot of movies, each character here has clear, engaging motivations. No, dude. What is Katana's motivation? Again, 
this is this is very much eye patch wolf where he just yada yadas over the unimportant people, the people that don't get motivations or anything. He he already went Slipknot's trash. That that's acceptable. Boomerang, he just wants to escape. Killer Croc, I guess he just wants BT. Why is Katana on the task force? What what made her late? Of the six people we see, half have motivations. And motivations. not particularly good ones, but yeah, clear motivations. You gotta mention Killer Croc. You gotta mention Boomerang. You gotta mention Slipknot, the man who can climb anything. Set up in the beginning, and later on, Enchantress even shows us the characters' visions of those dreams come true. Some true. people. But hey, guess what? Who we didn't see? El Diablo. What does El Diablo want? He just wants to be left alone. <laughs> You mean the things that were set up in Act 1 <laughs> and then paid off in Act 3? Mm. Sort of like a film would be structured to do so? Mm. But that can't be. This is a superhero movie. They don't do those yeah, things. It's different. It's different, so it's good. But it's also the same, and it's good. I want to get into a DC versus Marvel fight here, but I think this works a little better than the similar story beat in the beginning of Age of Ultron with the Scarlet Witch's visions, because we've spent the whole movie learning more and more about these characters, and now we've drilled all the way to their core. These oh. visions- You mean Cap getting his final dance from the first Captain America, yes. and which has been his whole thing throughout his entire existence? You mean- Tony showing his fears being realized ever since the whole aliens going up into the sky, New York fight, his fears being realized of, Oh, everything is crumbling apart and it's all my fault. And the only other person was, well, there was Hulk and there was a uh, one I more think person. They show Ragnarok a little bit. Yeah. 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 He was looking for the stones after the fact. So he got interconnected with, Thanos' journey, I suppose. Okay. <laughs> and how is that any different from Deadshot seeing his kid and all this other crap? I guess they did show El Diablo's little vision. I completely forgot about that. Show. Didn't you just watch this like a month ago? Yeah, but we were ragging on this something fierce. And <laughs> this is this is near the end where it's just like, oh, it's still going. Oh, no. <laughs> Once you're five hours yeah, in, it's just like, I don't... <laughs> Once, once that glow Williams off, it's just like, okay, let's uh, let's wrap this up. <laughs> we don't need this little vision scene. Bruh, it's like, it needs to be a tight 147, and it's just get like, in, it. get out. I don't know what I Frankenstein was, but it doesn't feel however long it is. I love that movie. What these characters are fighting for. And the way they're shot is so wonderful and dreamlike, which actually brings me to- You mean like Captain America? Yes. And Thor also had the same thing. Thankfully, I am mighty, and then he's in the hall with everybody, and they're all partying and stuff. It seems like it's all very vivid. You just, it's better. It's done better in Suicide Squad because it was shot prettier with some bright lights I and dreamlike state. That's it. But then you gotta wonder, like, does all that Harley Quinn want to be normal? Is that, is she just going along with the whole Joker thing and killing and is, what, what does that say? I thought she was crazy. Does she want to be sane? Does she recognize that she's crazy? Well, why doesn't she seek help? Oh, oh, it's, it's done. Oh, we're done. Yep. Because that's not what happened in Burn of Spray. <laughs> Next point, Suicide Squad looks different than other superhero movies. This is just a Different is good again. <laughs> Except for the vignettes introducing them, it looks almost the exact same as yep. everything else in the DC mm -hmm. universe. And he doesn't even say DC. He goes other superhero movies. Every, I think every superhero movie looks a little different than another yeah. one. Like, eh. This was actually part of the reason Kevin Smith defended the film, and I agree with him. David Ayer That's a lie. Kevin, you are a fanboy bum. Yeah, he is a big fanboy. I like a few of his movies, though. Yeah. I, I enjoy this podcast when I listen to it. There you go.
David Ayer really brought a unique tone and voice to the table with <sighs> unique is not good yeah. inherently. Yeah, no, just saying the word unique means absolutely not. Do you know how many unique pizzas there are out there? Take a bite. Take a bite of that in banana pepperoni, black olive, and tofu bread bush <laughs> with some chives thrown on for good measure. Take a bite. This movie, the look of the film is unlike anything we've seen before from this genre. And I'm not just talking about the colorful Love titles that were at. Yeah, that was literally one of the best things yeah. I've seen. It, yeah, great. That's great and in post-production there were straight up horror visuals running throughout this movie and that you mean like in spider-man 2 where a horror director did a lot of horror things like uh doc ox revival where he first gets his powers and you have that lady screaming and scratching the ground as the nail uh marks are there while he, she's being dragged away you mean like that type of horror stuff or do you mean modern horror stuff with a bunch of jump scares and there's a boogeyman behind me what is he talking about there's plenty of things like that he's <laughs> um um even though it was bad fan four stick had horror elements like that with dr doom just running through the hall while he's blinking off and on the lights are blinking off and on and he's just beheading people that's very horrific that's pretty unheard of for the superhero genre. No, it's not. <laughs> it's absolutely not. No. This resulted in an amazing character design for Enchantress. From the evil demon look to the godly look at the end where you really see the succubus no. possessing June Moon's body. No. Where she, just... she looks terrible. She looks legit terrible. And that half dance crap she's doing, it looks horrendous. And, and what's unique about her? She's got a big glowing heart and like a flowing dress. And a, and a and big a, headdress. And a big headdress. That's not amazing. I'd be like, okay, and and what do we do? What else are we doing with this? No, we're done. <laughs> it's in print. Like, what are you doing, Suicide Squad? She's kind of doing this weird. She looks very much like um Ali and Queen of the Dam. Oh, I was thinking of the same thing. So, and that's not a quality movie. No. Your dance thing. She's Bless like makes soul. that weird joke about balls. Actually, you don't have the balls. Hey, that is. How's a... that a joke? That's a statement. Mm-hmm. You don't have the guts would imply the same exact thing. You can't do it. You don't have the heart. Weird Anything joke else. to make if you're an ancient deity. Come at me, bro. <laughs> I really feel like I'm killing this impression. Also, yeah, you know, well, you're making fun of it, but it's also a good thing. What, what is I don't understand. I don't understand. Wait, why is why is it a great superhero movie? Have we? I don't think because it does all the things that superhero movies do, but different, but same. <laughs> That's all this is. A bunch of just perfect, creepy moments that we need to acknowledge here, like in the big conference room scene. Enchantress. Wonderful. You already told us though, but I. That do. is so. That is so creepy. When That's I saw that. It's not creepy, but it's awesome. Yeah. Lost it. That is honestly one of the coolest shots I've seen in a 100%. superhero movie ever. 100%. Or yes, one of the absolutely awesome. Flying in a muff. What else you got? Like, what? Or how what about else this you bathroom scene? Like, this movie has legit jump scares. <laughs> like, with Okay, what's happening there? There's a tentacle thing coming out of the do. Okay, what? Spider Wait, crawling in the subway cares? or Harley's eyes popping open underwater. The last superhero jump scare I can remember is that one random green goblin moment. So, oh, jump scares. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Not true horror. Yeah, no. And but, that, yeah. And booga booga. And, and different. So it's different than other things. So it's doing something different. But it also remi reminds me of something else. So same. So also oh good. Oh my goodness. So oh, good. Are we not talking about Venom? Oh, this was after Venom. Yeah. Okay. But can can like a superhero movie hold on a shot of a chair for 20 minutes and that be different and that be good? Because it's different. It's not something that you've seen in a in a superhero movie before. Does that make it good? Bro, because can, all I, that you're arguing. I can think of a way that could be good. Oh, um, so um let's say there's just a chair there. I'm I'm not gonna go a full 20 minutes. 
But uh, obviously not. But uh, a good five minutes, you hear a bunch of action going on outside, and then one of the characters just flies, just falls through the roof, and gets up and runs back outside, and somebody else flies. I can see a, a long mm. shot of something like that. No, but I mean just the just the yeah. chair. No, oh no, no, absolutely not. Yeah, that would be horrific. But it's different. You haven't seen this in a superhero movie though, so that must mean it's good. I, and that's actually, his argument. Moment in the first Spider-Man. Ah! Okay. A lot of superhero. We were in that. Uh, we were in the theaters for that. Um, not that particular moment. People didn't really jump for that. There was a woman that screamed her head off after the blood drops when Super uh, uh, <laughs> Spider Man's on the ceiling, and then Green Goblin looks down and he looks up, and as he's looking up, she just went. Ah! <laughs> People are scared by different things, <laughs> is what I'm saying. So just go and jump scares. Because jump scares mean nothing to me. Jump scares are yeah. an excitement. It's a state of being as opposed to something that it, will truly stick with you. Something horrific. It, it takes nothing to do a jump scare. Mm-hmm. You can stand outside of a bathroom and go boo and somebody will jump. And that's a jump scare. Yeah. It's low effort. Movies are meant to be fun capers for family audiences. But this movie is the... No, it's not. Don't say what it's just supposed to be. And isn't like this it's a also catch-all. isn't this also PG thirteen like every other superhero yeah. movie in almost existence? And and was Man of Steel a fun caper for the family? No, I can see kids being bored out of their minds with that. Oh BVS, oh boy, yeah, there's, there's some sleepers there. There's some long stretches of just standing around and talking and no action and it's not like even funny or engaging so i can't see or even kids. colorful so it engages kids visually after the first 40 minutes you're not gonna get a lot of colors so yeah i can't see kids being uh, in that fun romp trying to have a deservedly dark tone to match its title which to remind you is suicide squad you know the movie where all the main characters heads might explode we're years into the superhero movie renaissance at this point and just like deadpool it is awesome to see a big tentpole film playing with the format finally it didn't play with the format it did almost everything exactly as every other superhero movie because you just went it reminds me of this yeah. this 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 <laughs> this so what is it playing with it's just doing everything but poorly why'd you choose this video are you mad <laughs> yeah obviously okay but there's, there's, mission accomplished. But there's so many others <laughs> mission accomplished I heard that let's not look at it as a se- uh, movie, but as a series. And I went, that's the one. That, that's my joint. I think it's worth pointing out that even though mainstream critics have completely turned against Suicide Squad, it has still been a huge success with younger audiences. 123,000 people. Um, that movie made $700 million. At $10 for a t- ticket... That would be $12 million. So is it not fair to say that what you're seeing here is 250th of everybody that's seen yeah. Suicide Squad? Yeah, because I know that I for sure do, do not go on Rotten Tomatoes at, to leave reviews or anything. Ever. Never have. And and how, do you, how can you say that this is... Uh, indicative of anything yeah and you said that it resonates with younger audience how can you tell this 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 doesn't speak to younger audience and let's not forget that's a d (laughs) plus and uh let us also not forget that you just went superhero movies are these supposed to be these fun romps that the family stuff so wouldn't the younger kids gravitate more towards that why would they gravitate towards this one it's almost like it don't matter it's almost like you could still take your family to go see Suicide Squad because it's PG-13 like all the other rest of the superheroes out there. Minority audiences. And I think a big reason for that is this Ooh. is the... Did he hit us with minority stuff? Did he say it that it resonates a... with minority audiences? Huge success with young audiences and minority audiences. Was a hit with African American and Hispanic fans because of a diverse. Oh my show. goodness! Okay, who are these African American and Hispanic fans? And uh, and why y'all clapping just for a black dude on screen? I don't care about up seeing another black person on the screen. That doesn't make me feel inclusive or anything. 
I don't give a sh Give me good stuff. Don't just give me, look, this guy's black. Now, look, this guy's trans. No, make it good. If if it's all that stuff and it's good, good for you. Yes. But if it's just that, I don't care about it. Take note, Suicide Squad is a hit with African-American and Hispanic fans because of its diverse cast. Not because of the quality, but just because black and Mexican guy. And did they enjoy it? Did more blacks and more Hispanic people come out to see this because of the inclusiveness? Or did the ones that are already saw it and usually going to see it went, yes, I enjoyed this. And then too bad about the racial stereotypes that were inherent throughout the movie. <laughs> so that means they still just laughed and gave it. And you're talking about take no Hollywood. Does that mean as long as you got a diverse cast, you can be as racist as you want. And those and blacks and those hit. Hispanic pieces will still like it. Just because there's a black people in it. Just because there's a black person in it. Black people are going to come out and clap because, hey, look, that's a black person like me. No. Get this. Oh, I hate that argument. And I think a big reason for that is this is the most diverse cast of a superhero movie. Shoopa oh the Whoopa. We got an Aussie, we got a, a Japanese woman, we got a black dude, we got another large black dude that's a cannibal in a thing crocodile makeup. Uh, little we white got a, girl. We little, got a woman. Big white dude. Another little, little white girl. We got a Hispanic guy. Yay! I don't care. Is it good? Is it good? <laughs> Is it of quality? That's all that matters. So are people up upvoting this? Just to celebrate the diversity of it? Or is it because they thought it was a good movie? Yeah. Because what your argument now is, it's diverse and it resonated with people and they enjoyed it because it was diverse as opposed to the film. I'm oh, sorry. The quasi film they got. Because it's not really a film. It doesn't follow the act <laughs> structure. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, are you, t you know what, this is way before all the rest of the stuff. First scene, there's a ton of minority representation in this cast, and also, the women in this movie aren't just love interests. Isn't but you said, but you said! Two of the three women are love yes. interests! And, 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 and Katana's the just like, oh, if I die in this battle, finally I'll be together with you, husband! Lois had a bunch of sh going on. A bunch of sh dude, and again, I don't, I don't need representation. I don't care. I'll, I'll see on Twitter just like, oh, look at this black uh cartoon. I'm like, well, so is it a good cartoon? I don't care about oh, look at this black owned. No. There's I loved the first three seasons of Boondock because it was good. I didn't instantly go, well, it's still Boondocks and black people for the fourth season. No, that season was trash. <laughs> just give me good stuff. If you want to give me good stuff black people in it, I am all for it. Don't just give me black people and expect me to clap. There was, there was a there was a show coming up on um, Crunchyroll that is like still semi coming out i guess called high garden spice and one of his selling points is just like all the writers and all the producers are women and minorities it's like well number one who cares and number two are you actively shutting out white men isn't that a little bit racist or or prejudice or bigoted isn't that what you're trying to fight against but yeah i don't care about crap like this i i am not a clap monkey where i go yeah look at that black dude in this thing michiko the hot chin was not good because she was a hispanic lady not because satoshi batista was a black dude it was good because it was good and they just so happened to be these yes things. don't make it look at this black dude and also this make it look at this and also this black dude. yes this black dude is a character. Not he's a black dude, that's a character. See how both the main antagonists of this movie are female. So not only did Suicide Squad give us interesting and complex villains, they're both women. As oh look, woman villain. So good. Just the fact that she's a woman means that it's good. Motivation, what, whatever.
I don't see how Amanda Waller is complex at all. She's doing everything she does for her country, whether she thinks is and she thinks it's the right thing to do for her country and to protect its people. She shoots all those people and she goes, "Yeah, that was classified information." I'm like, well, well, and and then she just walks out the room and it's never brought up again. Because it was for the good of the country. Man, women. And, and, and Enchantress, she wants to set her brother free, or she wants to resurrect her brother, whereas the other person that's inside of her wants to be with this man. What's complex about this dude? Man, no, but they're women, though. And that's all that matters. The fact that they are. the What they are. That's all. Katana could have been super awesome if she was given time. Would have been a great woman in this film. But she is literally the second worst anti-hero in this film. As far as doing stuff. Because Slipknot is just there to die. And then here comes Katana just on the plane. Here she come, y'all. The sword, though. <laughs> just Katana. She got my back. <laughs> I, f- and I love Laura Croft. But don't just give me old woman. Like I love um I love in Horizon Zero Dawn. Not because it's a woman doing these things. Because it's a good game that stars a woman. Don't just give me diversity and expect claps and expect thumbs up. Give me diversity. I am all for diversity. Give me diversity wrapped in something good. Yes. Oh, our board is 95% uh, minorities. And? And. What does that do? I understand uh, it's allowing minorities to get more of a chance in a business world that they would no longer. Or if it's something like uh, a movie about a trans person going to. It's like, well, maybe we should have a trans writer just because they know the struggles of the trans. Yeah, absolutely something like that. And, And absolutely a trans actor. Yeah, 100%. Something like that. Yeah, but just like, oh, boom. We got all trans writers on this show about freaking uh, a barbecue shop. Like, well, wait a second. What does that have to do with anything? You're just trying to earn points. That's all this is. Earn points by being good. Earn points, yes. Don't just go look Hispanic people. El Diablo is Hispanic. Like you. How many minorities are in the boys? Uh, Mother's Milk. Like He's three or guy. four? Uh, the the female is Japanese. Are we counting French? I don't think we're counting French. No, no, no. Well, I'm talking minorities, as yeah. in not Caucasian. So we got two. Uh, in the seven, there's a woman, two women, and um, I like never A-train. went. Hey. there's a black guy, so this is good. Yeah, I watched the boys, and I went, holy. Sh- this is a maze balls. There's a black guy too. I didn't even think about there's a black guy. Yeah, but it's not I like just a drum the show. Roll, Here comes the black guy. <laughs> Don't parade minorities and diversity out like it's something to be celebrated. Because just like jump scares, anything can corral a black dude into it. And it, is I, it to be celebrated? It's to be celebrated in that there was so little for so long. Yeah, but we're past that. I, I honestly believe we're way past. We're, we're 100% past that. We've shown that women-led superhero movies can do well. We've we've shown that black-led superhero movies can do well. We're going to get uh, Hispanic and all the rest, and everybody is going to be shown that it can still hit. But as far as, like... Hey, it's, let's, uh, I'll put it like this. I don't need a black sitcom to be 100% black. Yeah. I need a woman on there if there's female characters. I need um, I need a guy on there if there's male characters. I need uh, whatever races are on there. I need a writer there or at least a consultant so they, because they would be more in tune with what they go through. But I don't need, hey, here's this black show. 100% black writers. No, don't need it. Because it doesn't matter. Yeah. And, Be and good. It, and still, 
Captain Marvel was celebrated because woman led superhero. One of the trailers was just like hero, and then the O faded away, and it was just like her. Yeah, and I that, remember that. And that it was like, wait. So it's just that she's a woman. Yeah, it's such girl power in that when you got just a girl just blasting while she's beating all these dudes yeah. up. Like, it's it's, just, you know why it's called a cockpit? Meh, meh, meh. And I am... You can go back to podcasts years ago. I'm talking five, six years ago. Captain Marvel, who is um, who was Miss Marvel at the time, third favorite superhero. Not female superhero, nothing. Mm-hmm. Third favorite superhero. I just like Captain Marvel. I don't give a sh- that she's a woman. I love Static. Don't give a sh- that he's black. Make good things good. And that's all we ask for. Now, I can understand, especially like years ago with trans rights and everything and gay people. Oh, stuff, absolutely. They, they definitely needed... Uh, representation. More representation. We're getting a little bit better now, but as for just black clap, no, get that out of here. And El Diablo is a Hispanic dude, so of course you should get a Hispanic dude. It, it's not like um, I I it's not like um, New Mutants where one of the characters is supposed to be a minority, and they went. Well, the white guy was the best for the role. Get what they are. If it's a white person, get a white person. I've if... always been a fan of that. But but you guys fought me hard on that with Flash Thomas. Thompson? Thompson. Did I? Yeah, I believe you did. If not for you. I think it was either you or a combo of you, Pro, and Mike. I don't remember. But I remember being somebody fighting me hard on that. Where I'm just like, why make him... An, in, an Indian dude. I'm sure I was. Just, uh, my thing was he's minor enough that it doesn't really matter. I I'm a big fan of if you are what you are, you are what you are. Mm. And hey, if it's somebody that's just like this dude was the best role for the job, rock it because A Train in the boys comic he's a white guy. Doesn't matter that he's a black guy in the in the comic. It's not like oh here comes the black guy. Oh here comes him and this mixed race couple. No, it's just a dude. Oh, yeah, they were a mixed-race couple, wasn't it? Yeah. I didn't even think about it because they didn't go, we've got this mixed-race couple. Ooga. Just make what you make, and if it's and good, people gravitate good. with it, towards it. And if you want black people and all these and all these races and stuff in there, that's absolutely fine. If you want trans stuff or uh, gay people, that's absolutely fine. As long as the story around it is good, I don't care what you do. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm not gonna clap for you just for gay. Yeah. No. Absolutely not. Boy, that was that was too that long was of a big tangent. big tangent. Bye, subscribers. Glad <laughs> you were here. Hey, I, I always say this. We're black. We can say whatever we want. <laughs> or oh, if we were black women, boy, we could go up to the White House and crap on the lawn. No, not the White House right now. <laughs> well, yeah, Trump. Literally not. <laughs> but, but yeah. Tug collar. <laughs> Most superhero villains who are just angry white men who are probably... Oh my goodness! <laughs> angry white... White men! <laughs> We're sick of these angry white men! <laughs> I don't care about that. Make it good. Whiplash was aight. Loki was amazing. Mandarin was amazing. I don't care about that. They're white men. (laughs) Don't just say that they're bad and we're getting sick of the white man stereotype. Especially when you go Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3. You can't think of anything else, homie. But still, I don't care. I'm not I'm not sitting there going, oh my goodness, here comes freaking um what's homeboy's name in, in Captain Marvel? I think he was played by Jude Law. Who cares? Jude Law, here comes Jude Law. Oh, another white man villain. I wasn't like that. I was like, well, I'm getting a little bored here. <laughs> That's what I was like. Boy, Captain Marvel was not a good film. Yeah, certainly falls off a cliff near the end. <laughs> and probably are that three Iron Man and Lex. Ing Luther. Famous.
one of the most famous villains of all times. Who cares that they're bald white men? I don't remember Ant Man's villain. Iron Man villain was good. And and Lex Luthor. Who cares that they're bald? I can if if there was a string of afro black dudes, are we can we say that we're tired of black dudes with afros being a villain? Are we allowed to say that? No, I guess not. <laughs> but but this white we are, man Thanks pigmentation. <laughs> Thanks, forefathers, for what you went through so I can say a bunch of bush. White men are the only thing that it's okay to say we're sick of them. Magical, we're sick of Hispanic women. You know how, how fervent people would be? People would be going nuts. But people would also say, how many Hispanic women are there? And I, you could go, how many white men are there? Well, and then you pull out a filing cabinet. <laughs> I'm just like, which letter you want? <laughs> but yeah, it's just so okay to just debase white men. I feel like when um, they dished. <laughs> well, they dished. They well, did a lot they of. Did and they did a continue, lot of. <laughs> they continue to do. <laughs> but I feel like um, a lot of people want. Um, they want. Equity at the cost of another race. Mm -hmm. Like, we can sh on white people off in day because they've had it so good for so long. But we can't sh on anybody else because yeah, no. they haven't had it good enough for too long. So when when is it okay to be like, okay, enough black people? When we get flooded with black people. We've been flooded with white people for yeah. a very long mm -hmm. time. And that's what it's going to take. Do... Yeah, it's just like right now, people are tired of gay people, cause every it seems like every show is just like but, one gay person, one gay couple is just like dude, the gay agenda. Dudes that say that, people who say that, women, men, in between, whatever, they always get flamed, cause gays are not okay to say enough of yet. Mm -hmm. White people are just like white men are just like enough white men, and, and people clap. Even white people, even white men are just like, yeah, enough white men. It, it, Be, okay, I don't care. I, I personally don't care, but it's because they've had it so good for so long. Like, uh, just look at every TV show that came out, like, even a decade ago, and just count how many white leads there are compared to X lead. So, you know, right now they're just going, no. And I can absolutely see it in the business world. That's just a boys club of powerful white dudes just doing powerful white dude stuff. Mm. That's that's where I need more representation of just like I don't need it to be celebrated, but I need some of those white people to move the f along. But yeah, I I am not of the mindset of get white people out of here. Get white men out of here because this is what it's sounding like. Enough white men. I'm I'm not get the best person for the job. Get the best villain for the job. Get it in there. See, the whole th problem with that is there's a fear that a white person is going to go, this white person is the best for the job. Mm -hmm. Now, are they the best for the job, or did you not just want that black person? Mm -hmm. So that's why that's, people... That's a whole other thing. Yeah, that's why people want, you know, a woman director, because they're going to pick the best women for the job. Yeah, whereas some... Man, we got a woman director, and we got cuties. Oh, cuties. That's a whole oh, other... Oh, boy. I, oh, I want to do, like, one of those... Hey, I'm defending cuties, but I also do not. Because <laughs> there are videos out there. Yeah. That would require watching cuties. And I can't watch cuties. Because I, I, from what I hear, the story is so... Dude, this is yeah. like tangent the episode. <laughs> yeah, homeboy is a bit dry. <laughs> um, And we're almost wrapped up anyway. The way uh, I hear cuties is about the sexualization of young girls and the lead young girl realizes how terrible it is to be sexualized. But my whole thing is, in the advertisement, you're sexualizing young girls. And even in the movie. So it's, There's a clip floating around on, on Twitter, and there's, there's cheeks. And I'm like, wow, oh, dude, sir. Ma'am. <laughs> Ma'am. <laughs> and I want no part of that. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm just like, I want to do it, but... Yeah, it, it would involve watching it. Now, I'm sure it's some type of meta thing where it's supposed to make you feel gross, and then you think and about it, go, and it's wow, just like... women are being sexualized. These young girls really are, and it's just like, I, I can't, I'm not yeah. doing it. But I did hear that it's got a good story, so... 
maybe there there could be like a director's cut or or like you know how people do like uh despecialized Star Wars they do like de cheeked yeah, yeah. cuties. <laughs> Head of a corporation? That sounds like I'm describing the bad guys in real life. Give Suicide Squad another watch. Let's reconsider. Oh, we're done with the diversity. It's just in there, and it's not a white dude being a villain. And we're done. Um, I have given it another watch, and it's t still terrible. Very recently. May even be worse than I thought originally. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty bad one. It's a pretty bad one. So, um, I did. I took your advice, yeah. sir. Mm -hmm. It's even worse than I imagined. <laughs> It's not perfect, but it really is a huge step forward for the genre as a whole. Honestly, I freaking loved it. And mm, it's a step forward in what way? Um, it does all the things that other ones do. It does things different from all the other ones do. It's got a diverse cast. It doesn't follow the three-act structure. And it doesn't follow the three-act structure like other superhero movies don't. But it actually does, and that's why it's great. Just like other ones do as Just well. like other ones do. This pushed nothing forward because all the superhero movies after it what followed in the footsteps of Suicide Squad. It's a footnote in the history of superhero movies around that time. And if you love Suicide Squad as much as I did and you're a fan of this kind of stuff, you should definitely sign up with Loot Crate. It's a monthly... Yeah, yeah so sign up with Loot Crate. Negative nine. I was thinking like nine five. It wasn't bad for enough for a ten. Yeah, there was near the end with the diversity stuff that got me, but yeah, it's like a nine five. Mm -hmm. Um, Suicide Squad is not great. Yeah, no, it's, it's really not bad. even. It's not even good. It's, it's really bad. bad. It's quite bad. Totally watchable. Quite bad. Uh, yeah, I do not appreciate you for choosing this video. Love you too. <laughs> I would have. I boy. A day where I don't think about Suicide Squad is a day that I'm happy. A well spent day. Boy. Oh, I just got my foot cut off. Yeah, but I didn't think about Suicide <laughs> Squad that day, so. So, take the good with the bad. Um, yeah. I don't know what we're doing next. We're getting close to episode 30. Uh, episode 30, Bleach? It's a long video. So? What what episode is this? Oh, you don't know. Twenty five, ish. <laughs> no, that's twenty five. Um, twenty four was the everything great, and because yeah, I, I remember us talking about twenty four point. Yep, 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 yep. So this so twenty five. Yeah, I just need to bone up on bleach. Yeah, we yeah, got five weeks whatnot. for it, and that's a minimum five weeks. So, um, yep. Don't know what's next, but soon bleach. Look forward to that, and then. Episode 40 should probably be fairy tale. If we don't hit that earlier, because I, 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 I want to talk about fairy tale very badly, because fairy tale is one of my favorite things. Boy, I'm just playing that game and I'm just smiling because I'm like, oh, I love these characters. It's so great. But we could talk about fairy tale without talking about the big boy. And we could do that big boy for episode 40. And then we need something huge for 50. By that time, something... Need something huge for 50. I do. Well, until next time.